we'll start recording. <coughs> All right, let's hear some answers. Because everybody did this, right? I don't need to come around and check homework today. Let's hear some answers. And it can't be Luke, because I know he's got the right answer, because he was in here working on it at lunch yesterday. Well, I did some, I did, I did number two at home and I'm not sure. One A. Who's got an answer for me? Again, the worst thing that can happen is I say, that's not the right answer. You can't fail. You can't be hurt. It's not like me saying that's not the right answer. It's like a truck hitting you. Okay, we'll wait for you, Jalem. We are on page... <laughs> Wrong book. No, man, that's the right book. It's the green book. We're on page 38 in your green book. I can't remember what shade of green it is. Gamma green, thank you. It is gamma green or green if you don't work in a paint store. All I want is the answer, big stuff. <laughs> Who's got an answer for him? Seven days, 23 hours, 15 minutes. We got seven How? days. Oh, whoops, I did all the hours. How many? 23 hours. And 15 minutes. And 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's probably right. <laughs> now. What is much more interesting to me is how you solved it. Because I am willing to bet that a great many of you did a lot of extra work to solve this question that you did not need to do. So if you got 191.25 hours, you also have the right answer. You get that, Harry? Booyah, Grandpa. Well done. Now, how did you get it? Because once again, with enough bananas, I can get a monkey to get 191.25 show up on their calculator. I want to know what you did to get to 191.25. Talk to me. Go. If you didn't get 191.25, you're going to want to pay special attention to what we start talking about right now. Luke, no, you can't go because you're going to do what I don't want everybody to do. You're going to do the way that we worked out yesterday. I want to hear from somebody else. How did you solve this? So Jalem started talking about finding the slant height right here. Why? Because you need it. Why? Okay. So what did he do? Or what did anybody do? More than one person did this question because two people have the right answer. Which means two people at least did this question. Drew a square on the bottom. So you made this a whole prism? Okay. Then what? I think what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you found the volume of this prism and then you found the volume of this triangle prism and then added them together. Yeah. I think that's what you're saying. Is that what you did? Anybody who got those right answers, is that what you did? What did you do, Harry? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So Harry recognized that if this is one, then this is one, and the bottom part is seven. I told you it was not to scale. It was designed to make you think. Then, Harry, carry on. So you found the slant height, which was the square root of 15 squared plus 7 squared, yeah? Which gives you an answer. And then what did you do with that?
Okay. I submit to you that doing what you did works. Essentially what you did was you took this prism, which was seven by one by 15, and you found that volume. And then you had this triangular prism that was, sorry, that was uh, one, no, I was right, yeah, seven. And then you had this prism. Now that's one. This was one by 15 by six. You found that prism. There we go, 15, six, one. And then you found this prism down here, which was, you used whatever to find that volume, and then you added them together. That's what most of you did, I believe, right? Okay. I submit to you this can be done much more easily if you think about what you are doing. Is this shape a prism? Yes. It is, isn't it? It just isn't a prism that we have a name for, correct? It's not a pyramid. It's not a rectangle. It's not a cylinder. But it is a prism because it has a shape that repeats, doesn't it? What is the shape that repeats? This whole shape repeats, doesn't it? In what direction? That way. So if that shape repeats, isn't that the base? And if it repeats in that direction, isn't that the height? So if I know the area of the base and I multiply by the height, don't I have it? Okay. So this rectangle was 1 by 15, correct? So how big is the rectangle? 15. This triangle was 7 by 15 divided by 2, correct? 7 by 15 is 105. Divided by 2 is 52.5. So you had 15 and 52.5 to get 67.5 times 6 of height. And you found just the face. Is either way better than the other way? No, one is quicker. It's the only difference. Am I trying to influence the way you do your work? Am I trying to make you take something you did understand and mess you up? No. I am simply trying to show you that there are other ways to think about each question. Do not get trapped in the formulas. Think of the concept. The concept in all that stuff of me folding paper, getting out the boxes, holding up my coffee cup, what was the concept? Whatever the base area was times the height gets you the volume, right? Okay, so anyway, that gets you, I believe it is uh, 405, I believe but you only were filling to 85% of capacity. So you had to multiply that by 0.85, which gets you 344.25 meters cubed. Then you divided that by 1.8 to get 191.25 hours. If you left it like that, you get three out of four. If you make it 191 hours and 15 minutes, because a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes, I'd give you three and a half. If you went whole crazy, seven days, 23 hours, 15 minutes, that gets you your four. Everybody understand? Excellent. Now, I know that I need 344.25 meters cubed of water, yes? One liter is 1,000 centimeters cubed of water. Can I compare those two things? Yes or no? I can, but I have to do something first. What do I have to do? Convert. One meter is 100 centimeters in a straight line, yes? Is this a straight line? No, it is three straight lines. So how many times do I have to multiply that by 100? 
thrice, one for each dimension. So the first time I multiply by 100, we get out to 34,425. Then I multiply by another 100, add two zeros. Then I multiply by another 100, add two zeros. That is how many centimeters cubed I have, right? But I don't want centimeters cubed, I want liters. So I do the conversion. One liter equals 1,000 centimeters cubed. So I multiply by one liter over 1,000. Since the number's on the bottom, it's division, yes? What do I do with those three zeros and those three zeros? Cancel them out. Meaning I need 344,250 liters. And that's what you should have for an answer. Now, a great many students do this question poorly. For example, they only convert once, right? If you only convert once, you get 34,000, and I'm going to write this in red because this is completely and totally wrong. You get 34,425, which you then would divide by 1,000, cancel those three zeros, and you get 34.425. And I've had kids hand that in to me and tell me 34 liters of liquid will fill a swimming pool. This is one liter. I drink one of these a day. You have been in class now for 10 days. Do you think that I have drank a third of a swimming pool? No. So what is the point of that? Not only must you recognize when math occurs, you must recognize when you get, and I'm going to say it, and it's going to hurt your feelings, an answer that makes no sense. Do not hand me in work that makes no sense. Okay? I have had kids tell me this answer is two liters. So you go buy a pop at Safeway, you share it with 80 of your friends, you can only each have a cup. But if you pour it into a swimming pool, it magically becomes the Weasley's tent at the Wor Wizarding World Cup. It's bigger inside. Filled the whole pool. I have had people give me answers that ridiculous. Please do not be those people. All right? Use your brains. You're smart. Next question. Let's hear some numbers. I just want to hear your answer. I don't want to hear your thinking. I don't want to hear anything about it. I just want to hear numbers. Go. Who's got a number for me? Luke. 19,279. Don't, 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 Just give me a number. I don't want to hear anything else. Who's got a, anybody got a different number for me? You can make it 80 to round it up. Though. Okay, we'll make it 80. That'll make you happy. There we go. Anybody got a different number? Blank is a different number. Because blank means you say zero pucks will fill the net. How many people have a different number? Every single one of you, if I walk around, has 19,280. Awesome. Oh, Stephen. I got um, 20,328. Right? Why do you not think it's right? Because I think I was having a bit of trouble with the math, but I had a bit of math today. Okay. And you just said no. So everybody else in the room has one of those two numbers written on their page right now. Well, we have them both written down right now, Mr. Myers, because we just wrote them down because we didn't do our work. Did everybody hear Stephen give an answer that he said, I think this is wrong, but he had the backbone to say it anyway? Yeah. Follow his example. Guess what I value? Orange. Yeah. So nobody else has a number for me because it doesn't matter if you're wrong. Now is when you want to be wrong. When Tuesday of next week when you write your test is when you don't want to be wrong. But now I applaud you if you write, give me an answer and it's wrong because you had the backbone to do so. Still, even with that speech, nobody wants to give me another number? Damn, that was supposed to be uplifting. Jesna, what you got? 14,970. 
14,976. What else? Nobody else? Nobody else. All right, Luke, how did you get to yours? Because you and Stephen probably did something very similar because your numbers are very close together. Yeah, but, um, so Luke, what did you do? So Luke found the volume of the net, and because it's a prism, he went LWH, and he went 122 by 183 by 100, and got a big number. I got a big number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then what'd you do? All right, and then I, uh, well, I hope no one is writing this down. I got... Because um, I haven't said if this is right or not. Uh, Keep going, brother. Which was pi r squared h, pi r squared h, because volume a puck is a cylinder. That gave you. So when you did all that work, which was. One hundred and fifteen. Great, doesn't matter. Centimeters cubed. What did you do with that number in the volume then? Well, I took the volume, which was two million two hundred thirty-two. Great. And did what with it? Divided. Makes sense, doesn't it? Volume of the net, the space inside the net, two million somethings, and I'm going to fill it with pucks, right? Yeah. Okay. Here is a top down view of the net, right? You guys have seen this camera in hockey to see if the puck's gone over the goal line, right? It's looking straight down on the net. What shape's a puck? What's that right there? That's a gap. That's empty space. Oh. So, if I'm doing volume and the pucks are round, isn't there going to be empty volume? Oh, you did this with the golf ball one. Right. I know. It's almost like I give you stuff in the notes that preps you for the questions that are going to be marked. That's tricky. I know, right? It's almost like I've done this before. Steven, you just put your hand up. Yeah, I was going to say, what if we um, melted the pucks? You melted the pucks down, of course. Every lawyer ball math honor student says that as soon as I show them this. Oh, but Mr. Mars, I had a giant cauldron, and I put a Bunsen burner under it, and I melted all the pucks down, and then I tipped the net on its back, and I filled the net with liquid puck. So, yes, could you lawyer ball it that way? Yeah. Absolutely right. Let me give you a piece of advice. Those of you that have been in my, not been in a grade nine class with me. How much do I like that type of arguing? A lot. On a scale of one to 10. Hallie, how much do I like lawyer ball? I don't. She can't even give me a number. If you have to resort to lawyer ball, your math is wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Here is what I mean by lawyer ball. Uh, your kid fell off the monkey bars? Well, obviously it's the monkey bars fault. It has nothing to do with your kid being a clumsy oaf. So let's sue the monkey bar company and then make sure that nobody builds monkey bars anymore. That's lawyer ball. Everybody understand? If you have to go, oh, 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 but what if I that's not gonna be the right answer. Understand? Everybody with me? Now, Steve and I applaud you, but do you have a cauldron? Or are you melting down the pucks? In the spirit of the question, did I want you to melt down the pucks? Okay. That being said, if you added that at the very end, well, I melted down the pucks and filled the net, I would say, good on you, three out of four. Understand? Now, that means that obviously those two answers aren't right. So Jesna's right. 
How did you find that answer, Jesna? You don't like to talk out loud, I know. So, Jesna had this same net, right? That's looking straight downwards on it, yeah? How far back did the net go? Read the question. 100 centimeters. How wide was the net? Either 183 or 122, it doesn't matter. Let's go 183, yeah? Okay. Pucks can sit in it that way and that way and then fill all this space up, right? How do you know how many pucks will fit backwards? It's one meter. It's 100 centimeters and how big is each puck? 2.5. No, read the question. In height. 7.62 is the diameter of the puck, right? So each of these pucks is 7.62. So what math do I do with 100 and 7.62? What do I do? Divide. What's 100 divided by 7.62? 13? Exactly! 13.12. Why why do I say 13 then? Because we're not lawyer balling, are we, Steve? We don't have a hacksaw out there to cut off 0.12 of a puck, Mr. Myers. <laughs> so, we can fit 13 pucks going that way. What do we do this way? 183 divided by what? 7.62. Because we're going across, right? We're still doing this now. Just wait. So what does that give me? 24. So I got 24 pucks this way and 13 pucks this way. So how many pucks fit on the ice in the bottom of the net? What math do I do to find it out? 24 by 13, and what do I get? 312. The bottom of the net will hold 312 pucks if I choose to use these dimensions. Now, what's the height? Right? And how tall is the net? 122 divided by what? 2.54. So how tall is my 312 puck stack going to go? What's that? So 48, right? So 312 pucks, 48 pucks high. 312 by 48, and what do you get? 14,976. Nice job, Jesna. You're my favorite. Now, when I say that, Jesna, it's always funny to look around the room and see how many other people got 14,976 or close to it. Because when I say you're my favorite, they all go... <laughs> Is Jesna's favorite? I got that answer too. Because Jesna said it. Now, now that you know you'll be the favorite of the math teacher, how many people got around 14,900? Uh, oh, 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 all of a sudden, two more favorites. Look at you. Jazreet, I am hurt. You have been in my class now for two years. You should have given me a number. That hurts my feelings. <laughs> The only thing that would hurt my, make my feelings less hurt is if you bring me gluten-free nan bread. That's the only thing that will help now, is some gluten-free nan. I love nan bread, but as you all know, gluten is poison to me. So. Is this kind of question, are these types of questions going to be on the test? Let me check the future. Yeah. I got nothing. Because if I could see the future, I already have would have won Saturday's lottery and you wouldn't see me Monday because I already would have bought a beach villa in Ecuador and I'd already be gone. <laughs> if I won the lottery Saturday night, I would already be gone by Monday. I would just walk, drive to the airport, leave my car in long-term parking forever, get on a plane, fly to Ecuador. You wouldn't even see me Monday. What about your house and your stuff, Mr. Myers? I just won $52 million. I'll buy me a new stuff. <laughs> you wouldn't even see me. You know all those losers that say, well, I'm just going to go back to work on Monday because it's just another day. Idiot. Yeah. You just won $52 million. You're going back to flip burgers? Moron. Not that I don't love you guys, but honestly, right? This is my job. Right? 
The thing you need to ask yourself is whatever you choose to do with your life, would you do it for free? No. No. I love my job, but I still wouldn't do it for free. You should. That's a good career plan. You should take that to planning 10. <laughs> Try doing that on your resume. Professional lottery player. That's genius. Genius. That's Absolutely. You have a chance. Yeah. Yes, if you win enough. <laughs> now. Moving on to number three. Where on a can does paper live? Side. Only on the side. So is this surface area or volume? Surface area. What's the surface area of a cylinder? 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. What part of that do I not need? 2 pi r squared, because I don't care about the circles. I only care about the sides. 2 pi. What's your r? 4.25. What's your height? 12. That equals 102 pi. Right? Is that the math class answer, or is that the real answer? Math class, math math class, class answer. Can I phone my paper supplier and say, dude... I'm making 100,000 cans of soup today. I need 102 pi bits of paper per can. Send it over. Click. No, I cannot. So what must I do with that? Multiply it by pi. I would multiply it by 100,000 first. What? I got to do 100,000 cans. Can't you? Can't you? You can't? I'm asking you. Because doesn't it say 100,000? And isn't that one can? So why can't I do times 100,000? You're saying I can't. I'm asking you why. Why? Who just said it makes no difference? Why? Well, let's prove this through experimentation. Luke says he would like to do 102 times pi, which will get you what on your calculator? 320.44 and a bunch of decimals, yes? Do we, do we care about the decimals? We're making 100,000 pieces of paper. Do we really need to care about 0.44 of a, piece, of a centimeter? No. So let's just leave it at 320. Is everyone okay with that? Okay. That's one can. 320 centimeters squared. I had to do 100,000 cans, yeah? So I got to multiply that by 100,000 if we're going to follow Luke's methods, yeah? yeah? How many zeros are there? So how many zeros do I put here? Six. Five plus the zero that's there, right? So it's 32 and then six zeros. 32 million. Everyone agree with Luke's thinking? Now, Veronica says, yeah, 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 you don't have to do that. That's no, 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 no. Veronica says, I got 102 pi, and I'm going to multiply that by 100,000. Everyone agree? So numbers with numbers, yeah? So how many zeros do I got to put on that 102? Five zeros. Everyone agree? So 102, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Everyone agree? 10,200,000, yeah? yeah? Times what? Pi. Isn't pi about 3? Isn't 3 times 10 about 30? Isn't 200,000 times 10 about 2 million? So isn't it 32 million? So does it matter? Picking up what I'm putting down? Read my mail, mowing my lawn? Why doesn't it matter? Because it's all multiplication. 
Okay? So I need me 32 million, to quote Dr. Evil, 32 million centimeters cubed of paper. Agreed? Why is that a stupid number? No, that's not the problem. Of course I... Oh, sorry. Yeah, squared. Why is this a stupid number? It's so big. You're not going to go to the store. You wouldn't measure the square, the area of your floor in centimeters, would you? You're not going to call the guy up and say, dude, I need 32 million square centimeters of paper like yesterday. Get it over here. Makes no sense, does it? Especially when you look at the next question. Estimate how much of the classroom walls could be covered. Would we measure, excuse me, the walls in centimeters? No. Now, the key here was this was an estimate because many of you did this work at home. So you had to estimate the size of our room. Sadly for you, we are in the third floor, which has the crazy extra roof. How many of you attempted this question? Yeah. Be honest, you can't get in trouble. Okay, did you attempt it using the extra wall? Just, did you attempt it removing the windows? No. I hope not. Because again, it was thinking that I'm looking for. So if you didn't try this question, let's do it now. We are gonna cover four walls, yes? Yeah. Pretend it is flat walls. We are at one of those weird rooms in Yale with no windows. If you haven't been in Yale as a secondary school, there's a whole bunch of rooms in there that are in the middle of a hallway with no windows. Oh, really? It's creepy. I hate it. Hallie, don't you laugh. You know those rooms exist. They're horrible. It's like you're in prison. Now, at any rate, let's pretend these walls are straight walls. Yeah. Now, here is where we get into difficulty because you guys are bad at what I'm about to talk about. How long is this wall? That long? 10 meters. 10 meters? 30 feet? Let's find out, shall we? 10 meters. 20 meters. Ready? Who's counting the clicks? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight and a half. Okay? Ten's not a bad guess. How long's the room? I'm say about 12 feet. 12 meters? Who's counting? Yeah. One. Seven and a half. Oh, wow. Everybody cool? Great. So now stop. Where does the paper go? On the wall. So, did those two measurements I just do, did, are they ever going to touch each other in any of these calculations? Why? Because it's the floor, right? So now that you know that our room is 8.5 by 7.5, you now can see with your own eyes how far 8.5 meters is. Compare that to up and down. Now... Let's say we are only going to go to that. Pretend we're in a regular classroom, like on the second floor. We don't have our lovely vaulted ceilings. You need this height from there down. You know that this is eight and a half. This is seven and a half. Use your judgment, your spatial awareness, to give me what you think is the height from there down to here. Three meters. I have three meters. Who else? I hear four meters. Do I hear any more? It sounds like an auction, doesn't it? Four meters. Five. I hear five. Let's find out, shall we? Seven and a half. Come here. I'm bidding. Hold this. Hold. Do, 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 do. Like 
inches, which is a bit of a pain. Inches to centimeters is one point, or is times 2.54, right? No. Yes. No. Yes. So it was 145 times 2.54. So it was 368 centimeters. So I heard three, I heard four, and it's really 3.7. Not bad, guys. Good job. And ladies, nice. So this wall is 7.5 by 3.7, yes? Damn it, son of a bee, you're right. No flies on you, Marley. This wall is 8.5 by 3.7. So how big is this wall? What math do I do there? Twenty-seven point seven five. How big's this times two? Good. I was gonna do the next thing. So that's fifty-five point five. What's this? Sixty-two point nine. What do I do with those two numbers? Add them together and multiply them by two. So I have a hundred and eight point four, hundred and eighteen point four. Meters squared, and I have 32 million centimeters cubed. Meters, sorry, meters squared, centimeters squared. So, I got to convert one to the other, yes? Do you guys like bigger numbers or littler numbers? I like littler numbers. So, I'm going to go ahead and change that 32 million. Centimeters to meters means it's got to, the decimal's got to move two spaces, right? For how many dimensions? Two. two dimensions. So it moves two spaces for one dimension, two spaces for a second dimension, and I got 3,200 meters squared. Well, I didn't do that. Wow. And I only got to cover 118.4. What math do I do? What by what? If I do 3,200 divided by 118.4, I'm going to get how many times I can cover my walls, yes? If I do it the other way around, I'm going to get what fraction of paper I need. Which question? Estimate how much of the classroom walls could be covered. Can I cover all of them? Yeah, how many times? How many times? Well, it's more than once. Twenty-seven times. I know. I wrote that question on purpose because I wanted some of you to say, well, I don't know, maybe not at all. Because I need you guys to be aware of what space actually is, not just the math. Okay? All right. <laughs> I think they should make the X game guys use those bikes. I think that would make the X games cool because the bikes they use, they're too good on them now. Right? I think that would be wicked. Some guy doing hardcore mountain biking down Whistler on one of those. Forget full suspension. Do it on that bad boy. It's got a metal rimmed wheel. That would be awesome. Anyway. How are you going to figure this out? Somebody did this question. <coughs> What'd you do? Uh, well, they asked me the circumference of the wheel this time instead of the 
Uh huh. So just pi e, which is 52 to pi pi. Circumference equals pi d, which is 52 pi, which is 163 inches. 163 inches. 0.36. I want my answer in feet and inches. What's that? That is 13.6666 feet. 13.66666 is what fraction? Two thirds. Thirteen and two thirds of a foot. What's a third of a foot? Four inches. What's two thirds of a foot? Eight inches. So what's the answer? 13 feet. Eight inches. Now, now I want it in meters and centimeters. What should I use? 13.666 or 13.8? Can I use the decimal when I'm converting from feet to centimeters? Do I have that anywhere in my data book? Do I have feet to centimeters? I got inches to centimeters and I got feet to meters. So I can go feet to meters, can't I? Okay. So I got 13.67 feet and I want meters and I have feet. What number goes where? Go to your data booklet. What goes where? One foot is 0 0.3048 meters. Numbers on top, so is this a multiply or divide? Multiply. multiply. What do you get? Four meters, 27. You get four on your calculator. What do you get? Thirteen point six seven times point three zero four eight. 4.166666. So since it's metric, SI, is that an okay answer? So if it is 4.16 meters, I want it in meters and centimeters. 4 meters, 16 centimeters. Now, Mr. Myers, I have 4 meters, 18 centimeters. Are you right? Yes, it just means you rounded something at a different spot than me. I care about concept. Mr. Myers, I had forty-four. Cause I did thirteen divided by point three oh four eight. Are you right? Nowhere even close. Because that shows me A, you don't understand the math. And B, you don't understand that 13 feet can't possibly be 44 meters because a meter is longer than a foot. Understand? Don't hand me in work that makes no sense. I Now, how many times must I turn that large wheel if I want to go one kilometer? If it'll go 4.16 meters, that's 1,000 meters divided by 4.16. 240.0, 240 blah. Which means how many times I got to turn that wheel to get to 200, to get to 100, I get to 1,000? 241. The decimals don't matter. You have to turn it that, four, that last turn to get over the 100, the 1,000 meter mark. If you were running a race and you stopped at 240 turns, would you break the tape? No. And you would be a big old loser. Well, you wouldn't be a loser. The losers do break the tape, except for that American girl that fell off. Has anybody heard about her? Is she okay? No. It's math class. You can look it up on your own time. You carry a phone. What about the small wheel? I don't know. Is it? What'd you do? All the same stuff. Circumference equal pi d, eight, 
18 pi, right? 18 times pi is about 56. I know, it'll catch up. It's about 56 inches. I convert that to centimeters. So I want centimeters, or I can use feet, but I'm gonna use centimeters. 2.54, 56 times 2.54. It's gonna be 142 centimeters, which is 1.42 meters, yeah? It doesn't matter. 1.42, so it's 1,000 divided by 1.42. Forgot a zero. And what do you get? Just like my man Marley says, he got 699, I got 704. Am I Mark and Marley wrong? No, because Marley showed his work. Am I Mark and Marley wrong if this is the only thing I see on his page? Yeah, because that's not the right answer, even though it's close. Everybody with me? Marley shows me all his work and shows me that. He's getting pretty damn close to four out of four. Pick him up, put him down, read my mail, mow my lawn. All right, now listen to me closely. I'm about to give you your quiz if there are no more questions. Do you have questions? Okay, your quiz is four questions. Oh, wow. They're open-ended. There's no multiple choice. You need your data booklet. Don't everybody get out your data booklet now. Listen to me right now. Some of you, all of you are going to f finish your quiz long before the end of class. So long before the end of class because I'm only giving you 15 minutes to do this quiz. Class goes until 11.58. Steven, how much do I like lawyer ball? Not a lot. Class goes till close to 11. Aight? When you are finished that 15 minutes, we will mark it. If you finish before that 15 minutes, you will notice in your books on page 43 begins your measurement review. You will do it. Start on it now. You are going to finish it tomorrow. Do not work on it at home. You are going to finish it tomorrow on our short day because tomorrow is a short day. We will mark it Friday. We will do background to trig Friday and continue with Trig Monday, and you are, oh no, you guys are block B. So you guys will write your test Monday, so it's second block. Unless you want to write Tuesday in the first block. Either way, you're either writing it after a weekend, but it's second block, or you're getting an extra day to get your brain in gear, and you're writing it in first block. Tuesday it is. You're writing your test Tuesday. Your spokesperson said Tuesday. Which means Friday is background to trigonometry. Monday is working with trigonometry, which is the same skills you need to do geometry. And then you test on Tuesday. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Desk clear except for data book, calculator, and pencil, and eraser, please. If you do not have your data booklet, shame upon you. But there are the... There's no sphere. There are all the shape formulas you will need. And... This is how much I care about you. Is there anybody that doesn't have their data booklet on them? Oh good, so what I'm doing isn't actually necessary, but I'm gonna finish anyway because again, I care that much.
Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, son of a. There's everything you need for this quiz, just in case you don't feel like flipping through your data booklet. I'm going to hand the quiz out. You're going to work on it for 15 minutes. I'm going to start the quiz with my good friend, Jeevan. He is going to pass them backwards to Olivia, who's going to pass them over to Rhea, who's going to pass them forwards. Don't screw that up. And then I'm going to give some to my good friends over here. I don't know who's going to catch them. We'll see. Did it on purpose. They're going to do the same thing. So they're going to take one and pass them back. It may not get all the way to the back. I may have split inequitably. Well, don't worry about it, dude, because Amy's going to hand these extra ones back to Joseph, and he's going to hand them back to Joy, who's going to hand them across to you two. No, 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 dude, no. There you go. Now Amy takes one, and then she passes the pile back to Joseph. Joseph takes over. Well done. It's like the 4x100 relay, but nobody dropped them, or you're all disqualified. Over. And then Harsh gives one to Steven. One extra. Huh, it's like I've done this once or twice. Go. Your 15 minutes starts now.
in case you were following along at home, that has been five of your 15 minutes.